Star Wars Clone Wars is the shit. Now it's Star Wars season, and you know what that means. It means I'm not gonna talk about anything related to that movie that just came out. Yeah. Now if you watched Rogue One and you thought, oh, gosh, you know, I really like that Star Wars spin-off stuff. I really wish there was more of that. Yeah, well there is, idiot. It's called Clone Wars, and it was there the whole time. I've been saying it for years. I've been trying to explain to people for a long time how good this show is. It just has no right being as good as it is. But nobody believes me. And honestly, I don't really blame them because I didn't believe people when they told me it was good. Now in this little rant, explanation, chill video, I'm gonna spoil a few things, but nothing huge, nothing major. I'm just doing it because you wouldn't believe me unless I use some of the examples I'm gonna use. Anyway, Star Wars is really simple. It has a simple name, Star Wars. Wars in the stars. There's no question about what's going on here. There's no question about what the creators want you to feel in these original movies. That's a bad guy. This is good guys. The thing that subverts this concept of simplicity is the prequel trilogy. The prequel trilogy has no fucking morals. The heroes are assholes. There's no quest. There's no goal. There's no anything. The villains are just incomprehensible. Now you guys have probably all heard this stuff from other people, so I'm not gonna explain shit that you already know. You know that these movies suck. I'm not here to tell you that they suck. I'm here to tell you why this baby cartoon for children is way better. In fact, it's some of the best Star Wars media that you can ask for. And I know you still don't believe me. I know you don't, so I'm just gonna keep going. First off, Clone Wars is an anthology series, which means it's not told in chronological order. It's just kind of like little stories thrown wherever, wherever they fit. The first episode chronologically is episode 16 in season two. That's just how it works. Most of the time, the story arcs are presented in chunks of like two to three episodes, sometimes four if it's a really beefy, important arc. They're like six seasons, but by no means do you even have to watch all of it to have a good time. I didn't even watch every episode. Some of the episodes are just stupid. You don't need to watch them. You can't make a six season show and have all of the episodes be bangers. Anyway, let's talk about that sweet, sweet content. First of all, let me make something clear that you may not think much about on your own. George Lucas did not make this TV show. This show was made by people who really don't like the prequel trilogy and they just wanted to make them better. But their job wasn't to delete the prequel trilogy. They had to make it work. And instead of ignoring the content of episodes one through three, they just kind of twist it a little bit and show you that how small changes would have made those movies so much better. Now, the thing that elevates this show beyond like average TV cartoon fashion is that all the characters that you hated in the prequels are completely likable in this show. Instead of Padme being a passive and emotionless plot device person, she's more like her daughter Leia. She's heroic, she's feisty, she gets shit done, she isn't afraid to crack a joke or like bitch somebody out or scream. Obi-Wan, he's my favorite Star Wars character. He gets the fucking all-star treatment here because everybody likes Obi-Wan. He acts like your favorite uncle. You know, he's like wise, but he also makes really bad jokes and he knows that the jokes are bad, but he just doesn't give a shit. You want to run? I learned from watching you. Funny. That's just how he is. He acts like your papa, you know, your your daddy when he tells you a bad joke. Do control your protege's insolence so I can concentrate. Anakin, what? Control your insolence. The Count is concentrating. Plus, he gets the best storylines. Obi-Wan, when he went to go kill General Grievous, that wasn't fun. That was really, really, really dumb. Obi-Wan faking his death and becoming an undercover bounty hunter? That's a fun story. And you don't even know that you wanted that. You ever wonder what Obi-Wan would do if he met up with the guy who fucking killed his master? The person who basically raised him? Yeah, that's a pretty good story. And you get to see shit like that in this show. That's not even scratching the surface. You know what? You guys already like Obi-Wan. Everybody does. You know who nobody likes? Anakin the Skywalker. Now what if I told you that every problem with Anakin in these movies is completely solved in this show? And you know what? I know that you don't believe me, but I'm not fucking lying. Anakin is the saving grace of this show. I wasn't even gonna start this show unless I knew that Anakin was a good character. I thought I was asking for a lot. I thought that I just wasn't gonna start the show because I thought he was gonna be a piece of shit. But you know what? He's not. 
He's not a whiny, brooding, evil weirdo like he is in the prequels. He's a real fucking hero, and he has realistic flaws. His relationship with Obi-Wan is way more reminiscent of how Obi-Wan described it in A New Hope. He was the best star pilot in the galaxy, and a cunning warrior, and he was a good friend. Yeah, he was a good friend, because you can tell. They joke around with each other, they disagree sometimes, but they never really have, like, big fights because they're friends, and they respect each other's choices. It's a sort of mind control, a hive mind. She thinks she can possess us. Great. Find out everything you wanted to know yet? No, wait. I want to see how it works. I don't think Luminara wants to see how it works. No, I don't. I'm curious. The more we know, the better. Come now, the nose or the ear? Which do you think will enter? I think the nose. He's a guy who wants nothing more than just to save as many people as possible and stop people from dying. They show you that that's a really selfish and unrealistic goal. There's episodes where people just tell Anakin that he can't always have what he wants. Instead of throwing a fucking tantrum and killing people like a maniac, he has a real internal conflict about how to cope with his flaws. After watching really good stories with this version of Anakin, you kind of start to forget about this one a little bit. You kind of start to forget about... Don't make me kill you! ...how he turns out. And it'll kind of bum you out to remember that the guy you're rooting for is eventually just gonna become some kind of fucked up monster. Anakin's totally fine with just killing people in order to save his friends. He doesn't see any problem with that. While the other characters, they don't really like that too much. That's more interesting than just having him be evil and murdering innocent people. Oh, by the way, people die in this show like it's going out of fucking style. This show is way darker than you'd expect it to be. Anyway, back to the characters. The new characters in the show are also welcome additions to the Star Wars canon. Ashoka seems like this annoying, plucky, scrappy-doo sidekick, but she's not that at all. She's fully capable of just taking care of herself. She's never annoying because she just says shit that the viewer's thinking. She really hates the stringent and, like, weird, annoying rules of the Jedi, but she still believes in their duty, you know, to be peaceful, be a good guy, all that kind of stuff. This also leads to a lot of interesting character stuff with Anakin, because he also doesn't like the Jedi. He fucking hates them, but he has to pretend to be someone he's not when he's around Ashoka because he has to set a good example. That's something that this guy wouldn't have done. He doesn't really seem like a good role model. Another character that's exclusive to the show is Asajj Ventress, who you, some of you probably already know. She's really similar to Ashoka, but on the dark side. She was raised to believe that rage and anger are really the only ideals to live by. And eventually she learns that that's just not how life is. She starts doing her own thing. She starts finding out who she is without other people just getting in the way and telling her how to think. Now, before I move away from the characters, I have to talk about one more person. Darth fucking Maul. Now, it's no spoiler that Darth Maul returns in this show. I think everybody knows that. I'm just going to tell you that Darth Maul being in this show is the best shit you've never seen. Don't worry about the weird spider legs. He gets normal legs pretty quickly. I feel like I have to tell people that because the leg thing really turns him off. He gets normal legs. After that, he goes on a murderous rampage across the galaxy. He just goes fucking rogue. This leads to a battle against entire armies and Obi-Wan in an attempt to just become one guy who's just ruling the galaxy. It's so much cooler that I can put it in words. His ultimate goal is just getting revenge on Obi-Wan for humiliating him. And you know what? Obi-Wan doesn't take this revenge plot like a bitch. For the first time, you can see Obi-Wan really struggle with the dark side. He wants revenge so badly for Qui-Gon Jinn, but he knows better than anybody how the dark side can really mess you up. Your rage has unbalanced you. That is not the Jedi way, is it? He starts to really lose his cool more than he ever has, and for the first time, he struggles to find the right answers. And that makes Darth Maul so fucking happy, because all he wants to do is just torment and humiliate Obi-Wan Kenobi. It's fucking Shakespearean. The one downside to all of this is that it ends on a cliffhanger. But you know what? That's okay. That's perfectly fine. Because the storyline is continued in Rebels. Because it brings back all the plot lines that were dropped when this show was canceled. That's a luxury that most canceled shows don't get. Now some more things that I kind of like about the show that I want to mention. It should be stated that the show fucking looks amazing. It looks surprisingly cinematic sometimes. You start to forget that you're watching a TV show. It just looks like a movie. Now, Lucas also let the creators just kind of use whatever content they wanted, which means that the universe feels a lot larger than the movies let it be. And I know that's a complaint that people are starting to throw around about the newer movies. They just dart around planets and locales so quickly that you barely feel like they're even on different planets. But here, you get stories with characters that you don't know, 
on planets that you spend a lot of time on, so you get pretty familiar with them, doing adventures that you want to watch. On top of that, everything in the show is canon, if that's something that you're worried about. Honestly, I could just really keep rambling on about how much I love this show. I just... I like this show so much. It's so easy to watch. It doesn't feel like a huge commitment, yet when you watch it, it's still really engaging. You start to like really appreciate Star Wars. You start really getting into these characters that you thought you hated. Characters that you've never seen a good interpretation of. Now, there are some really dumb things that I should warn you about. Like I said, some episodes are just not as good as other episodes. And Jar Jar is still a piece of shit and I wish they didn't even try to put him in this show. Luckily, they understood their mistake pretty early on, and he's not in a lot of episodes. He's pretty easy to avoid. Also, season one is mostly bad. Season one existed at a time when the creators were kind of afraid to try the more daring stories. Plus, the animation is still kind of, like, not finished yet, so it's pretty ugly. Each season ups the quality of the visuals, like, by a lot. Season two brings things up significantly compared to season one. And I honestly recommend that anybody start with the episodes The Mandalore Plot and Voyage of Temptation. This is a pretty good entry point to how the show feels, and it's also pretty important for the overarching story between Obi-Wan and his, like, ex-girlfriend lady. Trust me, that is way cooler than it sounds, and I never thought I'd say that I like a storyline about Obi-Wan Kenobi's ex-girlfriend. But hey, I'm not fucking questioning it anymore. After that, I'd probably jump into the Night Sisters arc, which is right here, if you, you know, want to see that. And from there, you can kind of just jump around wherever you want. Just don't really touch season one too much. There's some episodes in there that are pretty good, but for the most part, it's not that great. If you want to watch the Darth Maul stuff right after you finish Night Sisters, you can just do that. The episode's are right here. Just have a fucking blast because it's a long roller coaster ride. If you really just want to watch some good ass stories, personally, I'm going to recommend Bounty Hunter Obi-Wan. That's those episodes right there. The Umbara arc, which is right here. Also, Ashoka's last arc is fucking brilliant. That's the last episode that they came out with before the show got cancelled. But honestly, I'd recommend you watch some episodes with her before that, like Lightsaber Lost. That's a pretty good Ashoka episode. Anyway, if there's a plot element that you want to know more about, that you feel like you kind of missed by jumping around, you can just go backwards and watch the episode for it. If you don't want to jump around at all, and you want to watch the whole thing and just truck through it, I'd honestly just skip season one and start on two. And then just skip the ones that sound stupid. Like, don't watch Jar Jar episodes. You deserve better than that. That's the thing about this show, you get a lot of freedom. You can kind of just do whatever you want, just watch it at your own leisure. It's not like a huge commitment. It's easy to watch, but it's also really engaging. Plus, the show is all on Netflix. It's been on Netflix for like ever, the whole thing, even the lost episodes. Like, they just want you to watch it. You don't have any excuses. If you love Star Wars like me, and desperately want good stories with characters that have a lot of potential, please, just give it a shot. And if you end up liking it, I don't need any thanks. I just want to know that I spread the good word. Because Star Wars fans deserve good media outside of these movies. I like the movies. But you know what? I want to watch a TV show sometimes. And it's waiting right there. It's right there! Just fucking, just click on, it's right in front of 